no my liege no tricks no games this time just back into the story yes today we are going to see as our little boy devitt now a man well and truly grown up becomes a king and achieves his destiny let's begin so we need our priest to like us we definitely have to get his troops right now our new troop priest who has replaced bulk Andronic is not exactly on our side so let's see how the patriarch feels about us uh, he doesn't have a negative opinion but he is not ready to support us financially yet we also do not have nearly enough piety so I guess we're on our own for a bit we're gonna need to start developing our two duchies but I don't want to do anything in the Count's territory because there will probably be a war with him and I don't want to make him stronger so let's just get our new county to become orthodox and Andronic will sway Andronic that should be really useful this steward isn't that good and we have a new mayor and she's actually quite good as a steward uh count tornik is a we're not putting him with the council even if he is a decent uh spy master so she can be our new steward let's get her married so that we can get more kids of our culture and religion hopefully their child will also grab his uh, robust trait which could be great so teo carligetti is no longer going to be our primary title obviously our primary title should be georgia oh our son is still in prison i completely forgot that our son was in prison let's just let's, let's just get him out of here we're not going to make him take the bows we're not going to banish him but <laughs> we'll, we'll just i just release him I, I can't believe we we left our son in here for this long Ah, I guess that's what you get when you are a neglectful father. The Duke of Georgia. And we have now finished the Overseer Tree, which is great. We're going to stay inside of Marshall just long enough to get uh, Bellum Justum. I don't know if there's going to be many more wars, but there probably will be. Afterwards, I'm pretty sure that's everything we want. Uh, we don't need the prowess. The knight strength is good, but I think it's too many traits to make it worthwhile. Switching over to leadership will make it easier for us to influence the church. Uh, not leadership. <laughs> Switching over to knowledge will allow us to more easily influence the church. It will allow us to learn technologies that will help our Georgian culture faster. Uh, we do want to try to work towards getting Hereti so that we can have the full Duchy of Georgia under our control. So that'll be a goal we're going to look towards. So now that we finished that event, we have got another Marshall perk and we'll be able to change to Knowledge Learning. Learning is the actual name of the category. Right away, we'll pick up bellum justum and then switch over there immediately taking up scholarship focus just to get the extra learning and then we'll work our way we'll grab faithful and then work our way down scholar things are looking good we're developing our culture 
the Arminian principal principalities are very much independent now, which is kind of good for us. Mostly it's good for us because we may prey on them if they remain as weak as they have been before, but I'm not sure there's going to be many more wars for poor Divot. Probably any more wars will have to be the responsibility of his son or his grandson to just sway our Chancellor so that we can have a better relationship with him. He's the only one who's really low now. So I'm thinking about who I'm going to end up giving some of these counties to once I have cleared out uh, Count Tornok. Like my my nephew, who is also my, my knight, might be a good choice. Uh, he's a little old and he won't have any kids. If we could get him divorced, maybe that would be a good choice. But his wife is definitely not going to have any kids. Is that really a big deal? That's sort of an important question, right? Don't know if divorcing him is even something that, that we can work towards. If he doesn't have kids, it'll just inherit back to me or maybe to like one of his father's brothers, I guess. Which would be okay. Maybe I can get one of them married. I'll have to look into that. Our second son, Theodorus, wants to be a warrior. I don't object to that. I mean, I'm a warrior. In fact, we'll just educate him ourselves, so that he can take advantage of our pedagogy perk once we get it. Which shouldn't be too long from now. Uh, let's just promote our culture in Lori now. That our steward is available to do it. While it's not always for the best mechanically to spread your culture, it is important for me... It would be important for Divot, especially, to restore Georgian culture to all of the counties that are naturally part of the kingdom. We have a bit of money right now, but not too much. So, let's see. Uh, we could build... Hunting grounds, or hill farms here. We do need to keep developing our territory so that we make more and more money. Because some of our future wars, at least the wars of our children, they're going to be very expensive and very difficult. Let's just sway... Romelia? Our court physician, still our court physician, she saved the life of our father. And she's been very loyal, although she doesn't particularly like me. I'm not sure why that is. Part of it's probably because they still consider me to be a new ruler. Maybe we have conflicting traits. But it'd be worth it to get her on our side since she supported our, our father so strongly, saving his life and all. She's also been a good court tutor and a good court physician for a very long time. Count Tormach's territory, hopefully soon, will be ours. But I am going to have to pass some of it over to somebody else because I cannot hold it all. Our development is increasing in the capital pretty well, which is good. Just keep working on that and hopefully it will spread out to the rest of the duchy and then eventually to the rest of the kingdom it is important for us to develop our entire duchy for the good of our people the dream of our father is going to probably be completed rather soon i think devitt's dream is just to create stability and legacy for his family and to some degree, I think he imagines a future where the kingdom of Georgia reaches from sea to sea. A lot of this territory in here is Arminian right now. And while I think 
Divit sees Arminia as an enemy when Arminia holds territory that he believes should be Georgian, that should be part of his county. I don't think he sees him as a general enemy. I do have a lot of claims down there, though. I could use those claims to make a big expansion, but I'm not sure that's really Devitt's plan. He has, for the most part, already succeeded at everything that his father put before him. And I really think that means it might be time for him to, to rest, to take a bit of a break. Develop Georgia and leave Armenia alone, although, you know, we do want to take advantage of their weakness for that last necessary war. The Patriarch. He is still not ready to give us gold. He likes us, just, just not enough. We're really being held back by the fact that we have a sinful trait. Well, hopefully we can change his mind with some sway. Although the sway almost never works against heads of faith. And it does have a bit of a risk, you know? Sometimes it can go bad, sometimes it can go against you. But our father showed that developing a close relationship with the Patriarch in Constantinople is definitely something that's worthwhile. Uh, we could change to religious relations, which I think helps. I'm not sure. But we still need to finish promoting the Orthodox Church in Lori. So... That may be an option for the future, but definitely for now, he's going to have to keep doing what he's doing. He does support us, but he could support us more. Uh, we'll work on that later. It seems to be going up naturally anyway now. Although, I think that's done. So, we have enough renown. Oh, wait. This isn't right. We have enough renown now to pick the, uh, the next trait in here. Not really sure what to take, though. Hmm. There are a lot of good options, but we probably should just continue down blood. I'll, I'll think about that for a while. We'll, we'll deal with that later. It doesn't need to be done right this second. But we'll probably continue down blood. So our son needs to get trothed for a trait now that we have taken blood we need to start thinking about children getting traits and their children getting traits and future kings of high quality we have to start taking our lineage seriously up until now it's all been about alliances but in the future it's going to be about making strong children so that they can keep what we've held this is a very weak alliance but at least it's something and she's robust, which would be good for our, our kids to get. So I think we're going to go like that. Yeah, I think that's the best choice that we have going for us right now. Robust is a good trait, you know, just only slightly below our current social level. And her father at least has something to potentially offer any future military endeavors that we undergo. Our third son. His name is going to be Alexandre. Eh, no. No. Samvel? Samvel. Okay. Samvel. That's better than Alexandre. Alexandre is too cliched. Our culture? I, I want to add another tradition to our culture, but 
I don't think I'm gonna ever produce enough prestige in the lifetime of poor DeVitt. Oh. 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 Is that... That's Ramaya's wife. Yeah, not, not, not the most important Guram. One of the mares. The, uh, Romalia's wife. Romalia's husband. The husband of our doctor. I think we can probably just push our luck here. We'll do a hunt or a feast when we can. Yeah, that's, that, that was definitely... Romalia's husband was our marshal. That's like one of our most important people. So that leaves us in an interesting position. I guess we're just going to put this guy in there for now. Hopefully before the old man dies, we can find someone better. Eh, more peasant to rabble. That's probably going to be another rebellion. Yeah, all these rebellions. Stabilizing a newly formed duchy of this size is so much work. It is definitely not what DeVitt imagined for himself as a boy when his father talked to him about all of the war and conquest he'd have to do. He didn't imagine that the actual majority of his life would be spent managing people, enforcing order, Acting as a hiring manager. My cousin from the Armenian principalities, Prince Simbat, has decided to give us a Warhammer. I'm not sure why, but it is a nice and thoughtful gift since we don't have a weapon. I, I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure what he, uh, what he's thinking. His daughter is his only heir. And I think it's going to stick that way. She's married to, I think, his spy master. All right, we'll just put that on. No point in having it if we're not going to wear it. There's a theoretical chance it might matter at some point. If not for us, then maybe for someone in future generations. And my wife is pregnant. That's good. Bets on it being another son. We are now a pedagogue, which will help those kids that we're training directly. Uh, and my wife has typhus. All right. Romilia, you know what to do about typhus. You are a... Oh, she's pregnant with typhus. That's that's not great. That's really not good. Ah, oh, well, but look at that. Reduced disease symptoms. Romilia comes through again. Probably saved my wife's life. And probably my unborn child from their ter terrible typhus. Because she's such a good doctor. I mean, she's not even actually that good. And look at that. Ah, oh, Romalia, I have to thank you personally. You have been there, well, you have been there for as long as I've been alive. You're not that much older than me, really. You joined our court long ago, and you have served as our physician through all of our trials and tribulations. You saved my father. You saved my wife. And you saved my unborn child. It is impossible for me to ever properly show you my thanks. But know that you will always have a place in this house. She's already better. Didn't even last until the baby was born. Which is a good thing because you don't want to have typhus when your baby is born. That would probably be a very high chance to see her life end. And maybe even the life of the child. And there it is. We can now raise ourselves up 
to the second level of Crown Authority. And now we will begin to strip him of his titles. We can legally do so at this point, but he is still going to rebel, which, I mean, obviously that is what we always thought was going to happen. His army is, frankly, pathetic compared to ours. He really doesn't stand a chance, but I mean, what choice does he have, right? If he doesn't rebel, he will literally have nothing. And because it actually makes sense to me that we would have been able to predict this war, and that he would refuse, we're going to pre-raise our armies, in spite of the fact we generally don't do that. It makes sense in this case to me, though, because... We, we were 100% sure he was going to declare war. All right, so we're going to go up to uh, Kartili. I'm going to leave the army, and uh, we'll siege that down. And once it's sieged down, we'll see where his army is at. Once this siege is done, we're going to go down there and uh, get him the hell out of Lori. I, I am very confident that we'll be able to do both things. As predicted, another son. This son's name is going to be... Alexandre! Yes, he stole the better name from his older brother. He robbed him. Of his destiny. Of being named after a historic colonialist. Alright, they really don't stand any chance in this battle. They really don't stand any chance in this battle. They really never stood any chance in this battle. They didn't stand any chance in this war. I mean, this whole war is just technicality it's pleasurable to us you know we're middle-aged now we're an old commander and we get to per perpetrate one more war against our old rival and enemy count tornik and once we're done well once we're done he will be defeated forever probably be imprisoned well definitely will be imprisoned and who knows what we'll do with him cannot escape me I don't know why you're even trying. There is nothing you can do to get away from me. I am going to catch you, and then I'm going to... You know, actually, it probably would be better for the war goal to just siege this down instead. We're going to do that. Okay, once again, same situation as before. We're going to finish this siege and then go up there and smash it. We should finish it long before he finishes his. Then, hopefully, that will put an end to the war. I think it will. I think we've taken enough territory that another battle will give us 100%. And here we go. Chased him down. God. Always, always sieging. Always fleeing. Always sieging and fleeing. Tornik, your army is cowardly. Just like your father was a murdering coward who killed my grandfather and tried to deny me my destiny as Prince of Georgia. And now, now it's done. Now I don't have to pretend like, now I don't have to pretend like, now I don't have to pretend like you matter. Now I don't have to let you be a vassal in my kingdom. I can legally strip you of all your territory, put you in my prison, and that's it. Our vengeance is had. So our army is rebuilding. And Prince Tornik here can be stripped of every single one of his titles. From prison. Legally. Without resistance. It is glorious just glorious being able to do this. Oh, look, he's wearing the peasant hat now. Look at his peasant hat. Oh, oh, how cute. He's wearing the peasant hat. Now, what are we going to do? We could force him to renounce all of his claims. We could do that. But that would leave him out there as our rival. I don't know. Forcing him to renounce his claims will simply mean that his son will probably just try to mess with us. 
You know, I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave him in prison. He can just stay in prison. All right, so we got to figure out exactly who we're going to give this territory to. Should be someone closely related to us. Uh, preferably very closely related to us. Our father's brother had two sons and among them we have three nephews. We have a good relationship with all of our nephews but they're all really far away and they're older men without husband. <laughs> And they're older men without wives. Which could end up causing a problem. Really, I think my prefer... Really, I think my preference is to give it... To Nazra, as I said I would originally. The problem with Nazra still remains, though. His wife is too old to have any children. And I really don't think... I really don't think I'm going to be able to get the Patriarch to force him to have a divorce. Even if I do, he may not remarry. So, we're going to have to think this through a bit. I'm not 100% sure what to do about it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the right choice. I'll think about it a bit longer but, and make a decision pretty fast on that. Okay, okay. Here's the thing. Even if I can't force him to divorce his wife, his heir will be one of his two brothers. And... Whichever brother that is, I could probably convince to come here and get them married. Yeah, see, not his brothers, but uh, one of his cousins. We are just not going to be able to make this divorce happen. Which is, which is too bad. It doesn't really matter anyway, because if I make him divorce, he probably won't marry anybody that I want him to. Kind of seems cruel, too. Their, their relationship actually doesn't seem to be that bad a one. I mean, she doesn't like me, but that's probably because she's heard rumors that I'm trying to get her to be divorced. I'm definitely not murdering her. We didn't click on that because we were really thinking about it. We only clicked on it because it's, it's instinctive when there's something in our way to click on murder. We, we, we never had any plan to do so. Hopefully that rebellion doesn't happen soon. All right. It's official. We cannot do it. <laughs> The, the Patriarch would have to have, like, a hundred... A hundred, um, relationship with us. He'd have to have a hundred... Green plus. He'd have to like us a whole lot. And, uh... If he liked us that much, I would want to turn that into money. I wouldn't want to turn that into... The, a divorce. So... The Count, the new Count... Nasra... Can, uh... He can just, you know, live his life out as a count with no children. We're not going to be so cruel as to try to enforce a divorce against him. Wouldn't be worth the cost. That is the honest assessment. It wouldn't be worth the cost. We'd probably have to send gifts to the patriarch and we're trying to save up to become a king, which is far more important since that is the literal purpose of our entire destiny that is the literal literal truth of our entire destiny we do not do we I mean we could uh, we could do this I don't even know though if we like force the mm. you know I could use the piety though like, I could seek an indulgence, which will make him like me more. And then that indulgence will give me piety. Which I could then... I don't know. Turn back into money later. Once he dies, his cousin... We'll take the territory over. 
Yeah, even even with that extra 10 boost, we're not even close. We should stop thinking about this. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Eventually, his cousin will take it over, and we'll marry his cousin to a nice young woman, and maybe they'll have kids. And if they don't have kids, when his cousin dies, it'll just fall back into our hands. There's no risk here. Prince Bagrat, why do you keep me here? It's over. You've taken everything from me. I have nothing left. You've left me without recourse. Please, just let me go. I will disappear far from here, and you will never see me again. I could let you go. Perhaps I should let you go. But I simply can't forget. My father... My father put it to me to avenge myself and him on your family. And now that you are in my possession, and there is nothing, not law, nor church, nor God himself between us. My desire for revenge is not yet sated. But it doesn't matter. It, it, but it serves nothing. It wasn't even me. My father, the one who wronged your grandfather was, died when I was but a boy. And you, you were yet to even be born. Please, have mercy. Fine. Fine. You can go. I do not want to begin... I do not want to begin the history of my kingdom and my father's dynasty with petty revenge. Go, and never return. If I see you again, if I see you again, You will die. Okay, Theodorus, our son, our second son has come of age. And Samvel is growing up. He's growing up pretty good. We're doing a good job of getting everything under our control. Helping the new count to raise the control in his territory as well. Things are starting to look good. The only... Oh. That is our spy master, Mergarum. We don't really have a good spy master. Uh, yeah. So I guess we're just gonna... We're just gonna put Count Nasra in it. He's alright. He's not great. I wish I had someone better. But maybe now that he's working as a spy master, he will... Take a trait, a learning trait. All right. So now we'll take scholarly circles. That should help us to learn some stuff faster. We're definitely going at least down to learn on the job. It's been a pretty productive long life. We are now the Prince of Georgia. Our enemy. First Duke, then Count Tornak. Son of the man who robbed us of our birthright by stealing our grandfather's land from our father he is gone we've got full revenge on him stripped of all of his titles and legally so the church has acknowledged our claims everyone has acknowledged our claims Everything is, is really quite a bit under our control. There's only really one last thing to do.
And once we do that thing, it'll be fair to say that uh, Prince David will have fulfilled his destiny. It's not even that far away. 100 more gold. That shouldn't be too long. Once we have that 100 gold, we will become the king of Georgia. We will have done everything our father asked of us. We will have united the duchy of Georgia. We will have restored to our power Teo Clarigetti. We will have placed one of our close relatives, the grandson of our father's brother, in charge of the counties that were once our father's territory, our, that were once our grandfather's territory. Everything is looking great. Once they put that crown on our head, I think our road will be complete. I think we will have done everything that we set out to do. From this position of strength, it's actually good to see that Remelia is still alive, still doing a good job of taking care of the sick. You know, 62 years old, in poor health, which means probably not alive for much longer, but still saved my father from typhus, saved my wife from typhus, saved my unborn child from the possible death of, of my wife. See, that's why you trust people. That is why you trust people. That gift, that gift that came from believing that he did not mean us harm, is the final gold in the bucket that makes us the glorious king of Georgia. There it is. First Count Bagrat of one county, then Count Bagrat of two counties, then Duke Prince David of Tau Carlegetti, then Prince David of Georgia, and now King David of the Kingdom of Georgia, a small, strong kingdom with a future that I would have to say is pretty bright. Compared to our neighbors, our strength is very good for our size. We still have room to grow in soldiers. We have lots of opportunity for where we could possibly expand if we wanted to, either out to the seas, or we could do something about our claims in the principalities of Armenia. But there is one important thing we need to do before we go. We need to request the dynasty banner. Now that we are officially king, we need to enforce that by going to the former head of our dynasty and telling him, Give us the banner. It belongs on the wall of a true king, not on the wall of a mere prince. And now we shall bring our story to an end. King David Bragatoni has come to reign over the people of Georgia. Throughout the rest of his life, he would seek to control all of those lands where his people traditionally dwelt until... In a great war with the heathens to the north, he died on the field of battle. His son, Theodoros, would finish that war and unite the kingdom of Georgia and bring prosperity to his people. Theodoros, who was David's second son, took the position of heir when his brother, Stephanos, abdicated in favor of becoming a monk. Theodoros wished to drive the prosperity of his people more than to continue the wars of his father, and throughout his entire life, the coffers swelled, farms and pastures were built, new castles were raised, and the people of Georgia had time of great prosperity. 
Upon his death, his son, Divit II, strove to combine both the drive to prosperity and development of his father and grandfather. He expanded the borders of the kingdom of Georgia from sea to sea, from the greater Caucasus Mountains in the north to the lesser Caucasus Mountains in the south. Placing the feet of the Georgian people and the Bagrationi family firmly on the path that would lead to their golden age. That is the story of the Bagrationi family. That is the story of the rise of the kingdom of Georgia. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. And I hope you'll give me a chance to tell you another story again soon. I am Huntner, the storyteller, and I wish all of you good day.